Each story starts with the first page, and over 10 years ago, there was a group that wrote it for all girl groups in Korea and for the first time in Japan. A group that had enormous pressure on them to succeed. This group was Kata. Today, we're covering where Kata came from, how they inspired a whole generation, and what happened to them. But before looking forward, I always like to look back. Back in 2007, DSP Media arranged a debut of their next girl group. Pusher was high as this new group was following the famous Finkel, a first generation K-pop girl group that was competing for the biggest at the time with SES. DSP Media finally debuted this new girl group on March 29th and this group was called Kata. <laughs> Break It was Kata's debut song and even back then, it sounded outdated. Something already had to be changed. Originally, Kata was more of an R&B style group. And if you notice, the members are a bit different than what most of us remember. Kata started as a four-member group with Yuri, Sungyun, Sunghee, and Nicole. But it seemed that this rookie group would still be overshadowed by Finkel's legacy. I mean, what do you expect? DSP literally wanted Kata to be the next Finkel, making direct parallels between the members of both both groups. Maybe that is why Kata's debut was underachieving. In fact, member Sungyun had to work double time appearing on tons of variety shows to keep the name Kata from being forgotten by the public. In order to find some sort of progress, DSP were attempting to have Kata come back for the first time, but this wasn't possible. Member Sunghee was 18 years old and her family believed it was difficult for her to promote with Kata and maintain her grades in school. Sunghee made a promise to her parents to focus on school as it was her father's wish, and so leaving Kata with one less member. DSP then went on a hunt for the addition of two new members. Holding numerous auditions, they ultimately added the young Kang Ji Young and Go Hara. I say young because Ji Young was only 14 when she joined. This new formed Kata would make their first return with the song Rock You. <laughs> completely dropping the serious debut concept for a more lighthearted and cute one. Slowly, Kata was getting back on track and getting used to their new lineup. Embracing this new look, Kata teased a new single, Pretty Girl. The teaser alone started to get buzz among the internet. If you want a pretty, everyone a pretty, pretty, pretty. I mean, it makes absolutely no sense, but it still speaks to me. Pretty Girl was a mini hit for Kata and received even more attention when during a performance on Music Bank, Hara slipped on the mountain of confetti on the stage and screamed in frustration. I mean, look at that, how many confettis? That's at least 12. Instead of getting criticism from the Korean public, Hara was comforted and they saw she was so upset about messing up the performance. Finally, the media were giving Kata much needed attention for finding their own way in K-pop, but also for their natural beautiful looks, notably the leader Kyuri. But it was kind of a blessing in disguise. Because Kata was getting so popular, many members got sick and exhausted from trying to keep up with their intense schedule. And so they took a small break until 2009, where DSP did something really different in K-pop. They asked the fans for their opinion on what should be the follow-up to Pretty Girl. The song called Honey was chosen and after some production rework, Kata came back with that fan favorite. And believe it or not, the fans were spot on with their choice. Oh, baby, honey, honey, honey. As Honey became Kata's first number one song and claimed their first music show win. Staying on top for three weeks, Honey was the song picked by fans and look what happened. It makes you think, maybe companies should listen to fans more nowadays. From there, Kata featured on some TV shows to continue to enhance their image. Later, Kata said something that made everyone anxious. They would be returning with an upgraded concept. And they weren't lying. Wano was not what people were expecting as, oh, wait, oh yeah, uh, because the real title track was none other than Mr. Known for its iconic butt dance, Mr. skyrocketed Kata's popularity, and you can still bop this song till the end of time. The simple butt dance plus na 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 na, I mean, it, 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 it was a formula Kata used to book tons of advertisement deals more than they've ever done in the past two years. Mr. was the weapon Kata used to make a move to a tough market, but a rewarding one. 
DSP had to make sure it was worth having Kata to debut in Japan, and with over 3,000 Japanese fans registering for a fan meeting, I think they had their answer. But before that, Kata had to follow up Mr. with a new comeback. Would Kata rise up to the challenge? Um, yes. Uh, yes they did. Lupin was Kata's 2010 comeback, and this is a Kata never before seen. Darker, mature, and attacked fangirls and fanboy hearts alike. Crashing music shows Kata won three first wins and remained on top for three weeks again. As mentioned before, Kata was preparing to debut Japan by holding some fan meetings and handshake events across the country, building up that fan base until debuting with a Japanese remake of the hit. Mr. It performed really well in charts and became as popular if not more than it did in Korea. Mr. was the most downloaded song of all time by a Korean group in Japan with over 2 million by 2012. This of course made possible by the success of BOA years before. If you haven't seen my last video on what happened to BOA, click up here. From there, Kata took off in Japan, dropping a new single in Jumping and a compilation album of their biggest hits. Kata would be certified gold and eventually certified platinum, selling over a quarter of a million copies in this foreign country. Think that's impressive? You haven't seen anything yet. Kata continued to promote in Japan with a completely new Japanese album, Girl Talk. Upon a week of the release, they already sold 100,000 copies. Going on to destroy their previous record, Kata was now a double platinum artist. Without being in Korea for 9 months, Kata was still able to release Jumping as a single for the Korean market. It was soon revealed at the end of the year statistics that Kata, while in Japan mostly, made a total of 15.4 million dollars. All of this was done within one year. Continuing to lead the charge of K-pop in Japan, it wasn't until 2011 where we would see Kata have a full comeback back home in Korea. Finding time between Japanese activities, Kata recorded for their new album, but they only had enough time to promote for three weeks in Korea. And that's all the time they needed to step on everyone. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Step was another huge step forward in Kata's career. How many times can I say step? This retro sounding anthem quickly topped charts within hours, claimed more wins, landed on Billboard's K pop Hot 100, beating out Girls Generation 21 and Wonder Girls. Kata was a force to be reckoned with. And to do this in both countries simultaneously, how how is it humanly possible? Apparently, there was still more Kata could put on their already full plate, as DSP Media announced Kata's first independent Asia tour. Kata Asia was the most anticipated tour of the year. The biggest girl group would be making stops in Korea, Japan, China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Thailand, Singapore, Indonesia, and more. But they ended up only going to Korea and Japan for some reason. Still, Kata was able to bring in hundreds of thousands of fans, with every single seat being sold, and they even had the concert live stream across theaters, which were also sold out. Then Kata ended 2012 with a bang. And as expected, Pandora reigned supreme for weeks and months to come. It topped charts, won more first place wins, and sold over 70,000 copies. And by representing K-pop to the world, Kata won the Best Global Group Award at MAMA 2012. Kata! In 2013, Kata celebrated the new year with a concert at the Tokyo Dome. Selling out in 5 minutes, Kata was the first K-pop group to even perform there. Kata did much more Japanese activities and I will not cover it all cause I mean, it's a lot. They then showed dangerous beauty as they came back in Korea with Damaged Lady. <laughs> This time, Kata wore suits and played a dominant role. Yes, those are bowl haircuts. Damage Lady is so incredible. Like, I just want all of them to step on me and throw sand in my eyes and call me worthless. What? As all great stories have conflict, so did Kata's. Back in 2011, Kata hired lawyers to help them terminate their contracts with DSP Media, which had a back and forth with a lot of false information leading them to stay with DSP Media. But now in 2014, Kata lost not one, but two members. Nicole and Ji Young left as their contracts expired. Yo, so I heard that Nicole is leaving Kara. Nicole, you aren't, right? Yeah, she is. No, no, no. No, I read it somewhere. No! 
No way! It ain't happening! Nah, it's happening! No way! Kata was now down to only three. But DSP Media wasn't gonna leave it like that. They took this opportunity to have their own survival show called Kata Project to find the next member. Here is where we see Youngji, a trainee that had many missed opportunities to join a group, but now she finally found one. Now, would Kata be better or worse after the loss of two members? I'll let you be the judge. Mamma Mia proved Kata can't be kept down. Kata greeted Japanese fans again with their new member in a triple single album that sold well and almost took the number one spot in Oricon charts. And in 2015, Kata, without knowing it, released their last song in Cupid. <laughs> With one last stint in Japan, Kata in 2016 officially disbanded. As the members' contracts expire, the only one to remain is Youngji, who is now pursuing a solo career. Looking back over Kata's time in K-pop, it is safe to say they beat the odds. Starting already in the shadows of Finkel, they persevered, had a rough debut and first year, paved the way for girl groups in Japan, worked hard to maintain a presence in two different countries, lost members, and still persevered. They continued to live on through the members who are still here and those who are no longer with us. Kata will go down as the most influential and inspiring K-pop group, maybe of all time. Their story will live on through us. The people around the world, they touched with their music, smiles, and kind hearts. And needless to say, their story will continue to be written. That's it for this one, and that's it for me, Wave. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, please get this video a like, hit that subscribe button, and that bell so you don't miss another What Happened video and more of my content. Speaking of more of my content, I want to make new shows for 2020, and I want to hear your guys' opinions and suggestions about those shows. The best way possible is to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and I'll ask you guys there, like I just did on Twitter, because I am going to try to do a K-pop rewind for 2019. And tell me your experience with Kata. What song got you into Kata? And if you want to help out on the channel, head over to Patreon, consider supporting like these awesome people as little as $2 a month, that's it, and you get to make more of these videos possible. I wanted to talk about Kata for the longest time and uh, you know to share their story because they're such a monumentous group in K-pop. When you talk about the greatest uh, you know you talk about Girls Generation 21 but Kata was there too. If you want to check out more of my content click over here to check out what happened to Boa like I mentioned in the video and what happened to Sai much more than just Gangnam Style. But that's it for me Wave. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic weekend and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Annyeong.